Welcome to Perspectives, I'm Randall Mark. 1.1 billion people on our planet do not have access to clean, safe drinking water. Last year, I, along with some of my friends, started Run for Water, a local Abbotsford-based run to raise money for clean water in the village of Amido, Ethiopia. Recently, I had the chance to go visit that exact village to find out how access to clean water is actually changing their lives. But on today's show, I interview some of the people that work for Hope International Development Agency in Ethiopia and find out why water is the most important resource on our planet. Over the past 10 years, some of the rivers in southern Ethiopia are drying up and forcing the young girls of 10 to have to walk 10 to 15 kilometers to get safe, clean drinking water. Barakat works for Hope International as a hydrologist, and he brings safe, walk, clean drinking water to these villages. This is currently what they're getting their drinking water out of. Uh, goats are, the goats just up there and pan up to the goats up there. They can come in here and drink, and they can obviously uh, urinate and defecate in here, and that, all that disease is for these kids to get their water out of, I guess. Yeah, the community get water from here to drink, and the goats and their all cattle are getting water from here, as well as the people washing their clothes here also, so the water is very contaminated and full of disease. Right. So that's why we are trying to protect. And yet, if you get a, if you, with a, with a little bit of money, where you can get a cement concrete thing like we've seen, you can clean up this water, protect it, pipe it down to the village, and they have clean water. Sure, that's what we are trying, you know. We protect it very well. If we will make it free of contamination and we let the pipe to the community, then we'll, they will get the safe water to their life. Right. And how many people would be affected by, by this uh, getting clean water here? Uh, around uh, 2,000 2, people are getting water now from here. 2,000 people get water from that. Yes. It's unbelievable. And and these kids right over here, this is where they get their water. That's right, yeah. Bearcat, you've been working here. Uh, this is the spring source. Uh, as a hydrologist, This is you found this source, uh, the spring, and, and you capped it. Explain the process and explain what was here before. Uh, this spring was unprotected before, and uh, the old cattle and people are coming here to get water, so that the spring was very contaminated, so people, every time people are uh, getting, sick, getting sick, full of diseases, full of diseases. And then and the other problem was when the girls are coming up here to get water, they may sometimes they may be harassed by some people and kidnapped. So, so the girls were getting kidnapped up here. Yeah, because they are walking long distance to get this source to get this water. How far is this from where the village is? It's about an hour walk. That's five kilometers from from their village, but now uh, we are protect. We protect this spring. We keep it free of any contamination. So the next step will be we we'll, we'll lay the pipe to the village now. Right. So that here uh, any more uh, here any more people not coming up here. So the people will get water nearby, and plus it is very clean water, adequate clean. The uh, pipes go underground here. Right, the pipe is going underground. This is all dug by people in the village. They, they take an ownership of this. Sure, they contribute their fully their labor here. They dig the pipe range, they transport all the pipes here. And after we finish the pipeline, they feed back, fill back the trench and then they use this water nearby their village. And, and the, the great thing about this whole system is that they take ownership of it and they can fix it and keep it. They, it's a sustainable project, isn't it? That's right. After the break, I talk with the country director about why water is so essential to people in Ethiopia. Welcome back. Most of us turn on the tap and have a drink anytime we want. We take water for granted. Tebebu, the National Director of Hope International Development Agency, talked about how comprehensive water is. It connects education, healthcare, even safety. Tebebu, you are the Country Director of Ethiopia for Hope International, is that right? Yes. Tell me a little about how diverse the projects are, because most of us, when I think of Hope, we think clean water. 
but there's so much more going on. What's all going on in Ethiopia? We do, uh, the clean water is an entry point for us, and it's their number one need. Every community we have gone in, they say that that's their number one need. But by just putting clean water, you don't solve the problem. Uh, we do teaching. Um, the main component is actually the teaching. And we teach them on how to use the water, uh, health and sanitation. Basic, health and sanitation as well. Basic health and sanitation. And you have people on the ground living in these villages with these people doing this. We have nurses living in the communities and they go to every hut. We'll get, um, they have a, the public uh, teaching and then they go door to door. So every household in the village would get a nurse come to their household and teach them. Not only that, they teach them the how to work, how to care for their little kids. And they show them how to prepare a balanced diet for, for the babies. So you got nutrition. Nutrition. You've got, you've got clean water, you've That's got right. uh, sanitation. And, and yes. so this is a holistic approach. That's right. What are there some other, what are there other angles that you're helping out in? Because it's a very holistic approach to dealing with communities. What are the things, some other things you do? Um, we teach them the, the family size, the average family size in, in the areas where we work is like five, six children. So you talk about family planning. We talk about spacing, like no, don't have another baby till you have, you know, your child is two years old at least. So we teach basic uh, family planning. I'm now joined in studio by Aklilu. He's the Chief Operating Officer of Hope International Development Agency. Uh, Aklilu, we had an amazing trip to Ethiopia together. Why is water such an important uh, issue in our world right now? Yes, you're right, we had a fantastic trip. Water is very important for Ethiopians. In the region that we were at, uh, only about 11% of the people had access to water before Hope started working there. That means that people were getting sick, they could not produce food, they, uh, uh, women were spending a lot of time trying to fetch water right, so they couldn't be productive. Right, because it's usually the girls that yeah. have to go up into these and, islands. And, and, and endangering themselves. Right as they are up there because some of that, sometimes they got kidnapped, they got raped, they got attacked. So, I mean, water is so vital for everything that happens within yeah, the community. Yeah, because I never, I never really realized that until I was there. I just thought, yeah, clean water is important, it's good. But I take, you know, when I turn the tap on, it's clean, it's good. I never realized that it's a social issue, that this helps girls, this keeps them safe, it puts girls into school. This, you know, it helps the entire community, doesn't it? Yeah, and the water points become actually points of gathering as well because they've got schedules when the water tap is open and people would gather, then make decisions. There are meeting areas right beside the water points. Mm. Uh, community organization comes out of that. Um, you know, you just, you have so much happening right, in terms right. of the community related huh. to water. Not just to mention the health issues. Right, yeah. saving people from diseased water yeah. where cattle and goats are, you know, drinking in it and the same yeah. stuff. Uh, let me ask you this question before we go back to water, because I'm, you know, I went, with, I went with you, you live in Vancouver, you're a successful accountant, why would you, you know, what, what was it like for you to go back to Ethiopia? I mean, you've raised your family here, but why, do you, why are you part of an organization that is, is rooted in, in, uh, in working in Ethiopia? Well, the issue for me is partly because of the privilege that I've had of having an improved life, uh, being successful, uh, and, and my calling in life is to make a difference in people's lives. And I can make, percentage-wise, for a dollar, I can make much more difference in people's lives in Ethiopia than I can here. Mm -hmm. Because the starting point for Ethiopians is so much lower right. than the starting point for people here. People are in dire straits, they are poor, they are sick, they have no hope. And mm -hmm. I thought, you know what, I could spend my hour, my finite right. time, my hour helping these people and make an incredible difference in their lives mm -hmm. than you know, doing consulting work or accounting work. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. I mean uh, I remember, and you were there. We were holding these kids. We were turning the tap on with clean water, yeah. and you could see in their eyes how their lives are absolutely different now that we brought clean water. What was that like for you? Oh, it was unbelievable joy. I mean, many times I had to turn around because I was getting very emotional yeah. as I looked at these kids. It's, it's an emotion of joy because their joy was quite genuine. And what I saw in that was that they saw hope in, in the water that was provided for them. Many of them did not believe that we could bring the water 17 and a half kilometers from its source it to, is, the, to the destination. It's amazing. I mean, imagine a spring 17 kilometers away and we, they pipe it. You guys pipe this. Yeah. And I'm, you know, let me, let me, I want to talk about that in a minute yeah. because most people think of clean water as wells, but hope is, has a different aspect. I want to yeah. ask about that after this. Right after this, when we talk, we'll come back with Aklilu talking about fresh water in Ethiopia.